Hi little hawks, my name is Katie and happy fall. This week's lesson is literacy and we are going to be reading a book about Monsters Inc. Oh, and after we read the book about Monsters Inc, we're going to do a fun activity which will be really fun. So I hope you enjoy our literacy lesson. Okay, little hawks, before I start reading, let's go over our vocab words. Our first word is going to be scared. And you get scared when you see monsters, you have like a sense of fear and you just want to scream or yell or run to your mom or dad and give them a big hug or even your sister. I hug my sister. And then our next word is going to be scream. When we scream, it's because we're scared, <laughs> like our last vocab word. We have to yell. We yell, right? Like, ah, like really loud. I get scared every time I see a bug. Like, I hate bugs. I'm really scared. Our next word is going to be monster, like in Monsters, Inc. But I'm not scared of these monsters, I like them. Mm, monster can be something that's scary, like Mike Wazowski, Sully, mm, the Loch Ness Monster, the one that lives in a lake, and like many more. And our next word is protect. We feel safe after we see something that scares us and that we yell and scream and run around after we feel safe and we like something that protects us like it could be a mom or dad grandma grandpa sister brother i feel protected with my sister because we're really close and i just feel good with her how about you mm -hmm. all right so now let's start our story our book is called monsters inc and it's by disney so let's start Monsters of all shapes and sizes lived in Monstropolis. The monsters kept their town running by sneaking into the human world and collecting screens from human children. Those screens were turned into energy. Monstropolis was in the middle of an energy storage. It was getting harder and harder to scare children. So by scaring kids, they got energy for their city. So they weren't really trying to do bad. Maybe they were trying to do good because they just needed energy, you know? What uses energy for us? Computers, phones, lights, what else? Mm -hmm. right. Sully and his best friends, Mike, worked at Monsters, Inc. Sully was a scarer. Mike was his assistant. Together, they collected more screams than any other scare team. Randall also worked at Monsters, Inc. He could blend into any background, making himself practically invisible. Randall was the second best scare at Monsters, Inc. He was always trying sneaky things to gather more screams than Sully. Randall sounds kind of mean. One day, one day, Randall, Sully, and the other scarers stood in front of a row of doors, ready to start work. Each door would lead them into a different child's bedroom in the human world. May the best monster win, Sully said to Randall. I plan to, Randall snar snarled back. Randall sounds kind of jealous. I think he wants to be better than everyone else. Right? Randall worked fast and scared lots of children. Randall worked fast and scared lots of children behind lots of doors. But then Sully scared all the kids at a slumber party. He set a new scare record. Everyone congratulated him, except Randall. Uh-oh, a scare named George returned from a child's room with a sock stuck in his fur. Within seconds, special agents from the Child Detection Agency, known as the CDA, burst in and gave George a good cleaning. Monsters thought children and their things were toxic. So everything a child had was toxic. Do you know what toxic means? It's like something that you touch and it's bad for you. Like you can't touch um, something electric, like an electric fence will sting you, you know? After the work day ended, Sully noticed that a child door was still out on the scare floor. He picked inside, he didn't see anyone. As Sully closed the door and started to walk away, he heard a voice, Kitty! A little girl was holding onto his tail, but wasn't scared of him, but he was terrified of her. Sully panicked. He tried to get the girl back into in her door, in her room, but she wanted to play. Sully finally managed to hide her in a duffel bag, just as Randall walked by. Phew! 
No one could know about the little girl. The human kids were not allowed in the Astropolis. Sully's secret didn't hide for very long. When he stopped in a restaurant to tell Mike what had happened, the little girl got out of the bag. All the monsters in the restaurant screamed. Luckily, Mike and Sully whistled the girl away before the CDA or agents arrived. With no other place to go, with no other place to go, Mike and Sully took the girl back to their apartment. Mike was all protective gear he could find, but Sully was starting to think that maybe the girl wasn't dangerous after all, and a very strange thing happened whenever she laughed. All the lights glowed brighter than ever, so their energy got better. Hmm. The next day, Mike and Sully dressed the girl up like a little monster and went to work. Everywhere monster seemed, even the boss, Mr. Waternose, believed that the little girl was a monster child. Mike and Sully heard Randall and his assistant talking about the human girl. They realized that Randall was one who had brought her to Monstropolis. Randall's gonna get in trouble. Maybe? Mike and Sully rushed to the scare floor. Mike tried to send the girl through the first door he saw, but Sully stopped him. This girl, this isn't Boo's dork, Sully said. Mike was shocked. Sully had named the kid Boo, wandered away while the two friends argued. As they searched for Mike, Sully, and as they searched for Boo, Mike and Sully discovered that Randall had a plan to solve the energy shortage. He was going to use a machine to suck all the screens out of Boo. Sully ran to tell Mr. Waternose what Randall was up to, but Mr. Waternose took Boo and pushed Mike and Sully through a one-way door into the human world. Waternose was in Rand was in on Randall's wicked scheme. So since Randall was jealous, what happened? He tried to do something bad, right? Mm -hmm. The monsters ended up on a snowy mountaintop. Mike was furious with Sully for getting them banished to the human world. But Sully was worried about Boo. He quickly made a sled and sped down to the mountain to a nearby village. Soon he found a kid's bedroom door and raced back into the monster world. Sully arrived at Monsters Inc. just in time. Boo was already attached to Randall's machine. Sully smashed the machine and ran off with Boo. Mr. Waternose ordered Randall to get the girl back. After a while, Chase, Sully, Mike, and Boo escaped from Randall. Then they tricked Mr. Waternose into talking about his evil plan. The CDA agents heard every word and took Mr. Waternose away. Boo was safe. So Mike and Sully were good monsters. Mike had Boo's door waiting on the square floor. Sully carried Bully. Sully carried Boo into her room and tucked her into her bed. Nothing's coming to scare you anymore, he said to little girl. Goodbye, Boo. So Sully was protecting Boo, right? So she won't feel scared anymore. Sully became the new boss at Monsters, Inc. Thanks to Boo, he had discovered the children's laugh created even more energy than their screams. Instead of scaring kids, the monsters showed up in their bedrooms and told them jokes. Mike quickly became one of the company's top laugh collectors. So instead of scaring kids, they said what made more energy was making them laugh. Because that's better than scaring, right? I'd rather be scared. I'd rather be laughing than scared. The mo monsters were happy because their city had all the energy it needed. The children were happy because they weren't being scared at night anymore. And Sully was happy because he could visit Boo whenever he liked. The end. Alright, before we start our fun activity, let's go over some questions. So... When was the time that you have been scared? Well, one time I was scared was I was in my room trying to sleep and I heard something, but I ignored it because I was really tired. And then I opened my eyes finally and there was a cockroach next to my head. It scared me. I ran, I screamed and ran to my mom and I locked my room and did not go in for the next two days. Yeah. Um, all right, then what is, who is your favorite character from Monsters, Inc. in the book? Mine is Mike Wazowski, because he's so short and cute with his big eyes. He's not scary. He's better at making jokes. Now, what do you think Boo thought when she first saw the monsters? Do you think she was scared? I don't think so. She wasn't yelling and screaming. It sounds like the monsters were scared of her. Why do you think the monsters were scared of Boo at first? Yeah, because humans were toxic. They couldn't touch them. Well, that's what they thought. Yeah. 
All right, so the materials for our lesson is we're going to need a paper plate. You can have a green one or you can paint it whatever color you want or whatever other color plate you want. Then we need some construction paper, some crayons, markers, scissors, glue, tape, you know, to make a Mike Wazowski. So let's get started. So I'm making a big circle on this paper to, and then cut it out, cut it in the middle to make it look like Mike Wazowski. And I want to make his eye blue, so I'm going to make a small circle. Make his eye blue. Now I have my two parts of the eye cut out. I'm going to glue them together. I'm putting on the paper. I'm going to draw a little black dot in the middle so it can look more like Mike Wazowski. And there we go. And now I'm going to make him a smile. For his smile, I drew him a smile here and I colored it in pink for the inside of his mouth. And I made his teeth a little yellow. And so I'm going to cut it up and glue it up. And here we go. He's smiling. Now I'm going to make our Mike Wazowski some horns since he has some. You see? Right there. Oh my gosh, he has blue eyes. I didn't even know. Okay, so here we go. So I want to make my Mike Wazowski unique. So I'm going to make it orange, his horns, and one bigger than the other. So I'm going to tape on the horns on our Mike Wazowski. So. And then the other one. I think tape will make it a lot easier. So there we go. Oh, it looks so cute. <laughs> Now to make his arms and legs, I'm going to get a piece of orange paper and cut a strip. It doesn't have to be straight or perfect. Is it strip of it? It's going to be his left arm. And here we go. And then I'm going to fold it. Fold it any way I want. I just glue it like this. And hide it out like that. So it's on a little curls. Then I'm gonna get some tape. Put it on like that. And there's it. Okay, his, this is his right arm. So here you go. And I'm gonna do the rest. Just like that. So I wanted to make my Mike Wazowski really cool looking. So I added one arm really big and thick, the other one really thin and long, then this leg, um, small and short, and this one, like, kind of weird shaped, so he's really unique. And that's my Kozowski. And since I'm done, I'm going to put my name on the back, so everyone can know it's my, my house. And I'm going to give it to my mom. Here's my name. Can you? And that's my Mike Wazowski with little hawks. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I can't wait to see you guys again. Happy fall.